finally, Scott Boris is allowing a free agent to sign Cody Bellinger. He just got a brand new contract. We'll talk about that in just a second. What does that mean? That means that other Scott Boris clients should be signing pretty soon because Cody's contract, it's kind of a win-win for both Cody and the Cubs. Also, I know it's only the first week of spring training, but we might have the bat flip of the year already. All of that in today's MLB recap. We do these every single day. So if you're brand new, click that subscribe button. Don't miss out. We're so close to 500,000 subs. Thanks for supporting the channel. So before we talk about Cody Bellinger's brand new contract, I wanted to show a few fun clips from spring training. Here is the Marlins turning a 5-4-3 double play. The only problem is it wasn't a double play because there was no one on first base. It was a fake phantom double play. Staying with double plays, the Guardians turned a nice little two-piece for Carlos Carrasco. I'm so happy that he's back. And also Brian Rocchio, this prospect for the Guardians, he is a spitting image, a clone of Francisco Lindor. They basically have the exact same stance and they play the exact same style of defense. I hope that he's just as good. No, this is not a clip from 2013 or 2014. Matt Carpenter, if you guys forgot, he is in fact back with the Cardinals and of course, he's hitting an extra base hit. The Angels have found their Otani replacement in terms of giving someone else his jersey number, number 17, Hunter Dozier. They went from the best player in baseball wearing number 17 to the worst player in baseball wearing number 17. Like, no offense to Hunter Dozier, but he's been worth a negative four war. That's a real stat. Negative four war since 2021. I hope he bounces back with the Angels. Now, because we just talked about jersey numbers, let's just talk about jerseys in general. Look at this abomination. This might be the best slash worst example of the brand new jerseys. What were they thinking? Thinking. Here we go. The moment that you've all been waiting for. Cody Bellinger's brand new contract is with the team that he played for last year, the Chicago Cubs. He just got a three-year deal worth $80 million, but it's a different kind of contract because essentially you can think about it as three one-year deals because after the first year where he's getting paid $30 million, he can opt out. Let's say that he says, nope, I'm going to opt back in for $30 million. The second year is also $30 million. So if he plays the first two years with the Cubs, he'll make $60 million. That's a lot of money. But after the second year, there's another opt-out and he can go get $35 million or $40 million if he breaks out even more. And let's just say that he's average over the next two seasons. That third year is a $20 million deal. So that's a great deal for the Cubs, in my opinion. Now, a lot of fans across the game are pointing and laughing, not at Bellinger, at his agent, Scott Boris, because a lot of people were projecting that Bellinger was going to get a nine-figure deal. And even though this is a great deal, it's not $160 million. Now, we can't just forget that Cody Bellinger was one of the more inconsistent players in baseball from the shortened season up until 2022. He was arguably one of the worst hitters in baseball, and his defense and base running really saved his value. But I don't know if you guys have noticed, over the last few moments, I've been only showing Cody Bellinger versus lefties. Cody Bellinger in 2023 hit 337 with a 990 OPS. That is a 163 OPS plus versus lefties. That's why I think Cody Bellinger is going to be just fine going forward. He was better against lefties than righties. And in two strike counts, he wasn't Jesus or anything like that, but he hit 280 in two strike counts. That was his biggest issue back in the day when he was struggling with the Dodgers. When he was in a two strike count, you could basically jam him with a fastball inside or a slider away and he was going to strike out almost every single time. So Cody Bellinger, he gets a three-year contract where essentially it's three individual one-year contracts, kind of prove it deals. If he proves that he's better than $30 million, he can try free agency all over again. Like technically, he can be a free agent with Juan Soto next year. So what does that mean for guys like Mike Tockman or a Pete Crow Armstrong? I thought that Pete Crow Armstrong was going to be the guy going forward because he is a defensive wizard. He is so good defensively, it almost makes me emotional. And according to fan graphs, they don't even have Pete making the open day roster roster. They have Cody Bellinger as the center fielder. They have Michael Bush, who they traded for a couple weeks ago. He's at first base. And then at third base, I don't think that Nick Madrigal is going to be the guy at third base because Christopher Morel, he stinks defensively in the outfield. To me, he's going to be their third baseman going forward. So I feel like Mike Tockman is the odd man out. Pete Crow Armstrong should definitely still get some playing time. In terms of the ceiling for the Cubs, it all depends on one man. This man right here, Shota Imanaga. If he is anything like we expect them to be, the Cubs are going to be really good, and the NL Central, it's going to be spicy. What does Cody Bellinger's contract mean for a guy like Matt Chapman, who has been just as inconsistent and kind of the same story? His value has been saved by his defense. And to Matt Chapman's credit, I will say that he has been better than Cody Bellinger over the last few seasons, but in 2023, again, a lot of that value came from his defense. I think he won his fourth gold glove. If you're wondering why Matt Chapman is still a free agent, despite the fact that he hits the ball hard 
and he plays great defense. Look at this. In the first month of last year, he hit 384 with a 215 OPS plus. He followed it up with hitting 202, 200, 247. So he was a lot better in July. The power kind of crept back. He had a 908 OPS. Then he hit 197 and 167. You're not going to want to give a guy $25 million if he's not going to be consistent. So if you're asking me, I feel like Cody Bellinger opens the door not only for Matt Chapman, but a lot of other free agents in baseball. They're probably going to sign a three-year contract, but with opt-outs and the first or second year. Maybe Matt Chapman gets $22 million just beating that qualifying offer. I don't know. All right, let's break down some spring training highlights, shall we? Freddie Freeman, he went yard on the very first pitch that he saw. So the question now for the Dodgers, who's going to be the number two hitter? Is it Freddie Freeman? Is it Shohei Otani? Even those guys can't tell you. Michael Harris, he also went yard on the first pitch that he saw. I genuinely feel like Michael Harris is going to finish top five in MVP this year. He's about to break out even more and have a monster, maybe six or seven more season. Speaking of a monster year, I know that it's spring, but this could be huge for Este Uri Ruiz. That name is always so hard to say. I know it's spring training, but he went oppo on this home run. And to end 2020, I just want to remind you guys, Ruiz hit 302 with the 122 OPS plus. In the minors in 2022, Ruiz hit 332 with 16 home runs and 85 stolen bases. This wasn't the PCL, the Pacific Coast League, where baseball's fly and it's a cheat code league. Dude was putting in work without the cheat code elevation and thin air. I just really hope that Este Ruiz can put it all together because he can be special. Maybe 80 stolen bases if he even has a 330 on base percentage. Look at these monster home runs. From monster humans, six foot seven James Wood, my God, he went to the Nationals in that Juan Soto trade a few years ago. Listen to the sound of this home run. I'm going to replay it one more time. Against coaches throwing BP and swings and drives, what a mile to deep right, way back. James Wood is 20 years old, and last year he had 26 home runs and 18 stolen bases. He's going to be so, so good. And speaking of six foot seven outfielders who are going to be pretty good, at least in my opinion, Spencer Jones of the Yankees, he hit this baseball 470 feet and he stole 43 bags last year. This dude hit the genetic lottery. Now, earlier in the video, we talked about the A center fielder, Este Ruiz, and we know that he is one of the fastest players in baseball. Some other players in spring training to watch that are just as fast. Victor Scott of the Cardinals, he stole 94 bags last year, also hitting 300. And also, Jonathan Classe of the Mariners, in 129 games last year, he had 28 doubles, 20 home runs, and 79 stolen bases. Watch out for Victor Scott the second and Jonathan Classe. We have a few Orioles highlights to break down. Corbin Burns struck out the very first hitter that he faced as a member of Baltimore. Adley Rutschman had an absolute tank. I think that was his first at bat as well. Now staying with Adley, he threw an absolute laser to Jackson Holiday, the number one prospect in all of baseball. I can't wait to see what these guys do together in the future. And also, Colton Kowser, he's got a high ceiling as well. I don't know how he hit this baseball out. I thought it was going to be an easy pop fly to center field, but that's a walk-off home run. One more home run I have to show. Will Benson absolutely tattooed this baseball, and I think that this was a bit more personal to him because before the 2023 season, the Guardians, they gave up on Will Benson. They traded him to the Reds, and Will broke out. I mean, he was so, so good last year. His exit velocities were great. He gets on base via the walk he's pretty fast as well so that pimp job it felt personal you guys have been wanting me to do some trivia in these recaps so we're gonna do a trivia thing right now on mlb.com this is courtesy of sporkle can you put the 10 mlb number one picks in order by year all right so let's break this down so we know oh this is actually tough so we know that bryce harper was the nationals back in 2010 this is probably actually gonna be super easy uh garrett cole was the 2011 the houston astros 2012 i think that was Mark Appel. I'm pretty sure that was Mark Appel. Then it was Brady Aiken. It was one of those two because they had two pitching prospects that were taken number one overall bust. And then I think Carlos Correa was finally one that hit. I'm pretty sure that was him. We have Dansby Swanson in 2015 to the Diamondbacks. He was traded to the Braves. I think Ender Enciarte was in that trade. I can't really remember. 2016 for the Phillies. That was Mickey Moniak. Uh, Royce Lewis, Tigers, Alley. I'm pretty sure this is right. The only thing that I can't remember is if 2012 was Mark Appel or if 2013 was Mark Appel. I'm pretty sure Mark Appel came first. So I'm going to go Brady Aiken 2013. Did I get that right? <sighs> what? Carlos Correa was 2012? Was that what it was? And then Mark Appel was afterwards? Wait, what is going on? Oh yeah, Carlos Correa was the first pick in the 2012 draft. I am not smart. Well, everyone, that's going to do it for today's recap. If you made it all the way until the end, I just want to say shout out to you. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.